that. All right. Welcome back to your Gaza War sit rep day 153. Uh, no end in sight. Uh, what did you say, John? What day 126 of the ground war? Oh, yeah. I just closed it. But yeah, 126 days of ground war. 126 days of ground war, 153 days of war. Uh, what else can we say? 10 days um, of pause. 10, yeah, there were 10 pause days, I suppose. Um, and this is John Elmer, J O N E L M E R, <laughs> joining me tonight. So, uh, we'll do another one of these non deep dive news oriented uh sit reps today, which is a true sit rep, in fact. Um, and news from the fronts, uh, very interesting stuff, actually. But let's 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 start with Iraq, because Iraq, uh, as I mentioned in the last sit rep, is back in the fight after taking some time off, um, probably because of negotiations with the U.S. about the U.S. withdrawal. Has probably decided that the U.S. is not going to withdraw, except through additional pressure. Uh, has um, resumed. So this is the third day in a row, I think. They've hit uh, a, a target in Israel. They hit Haifa uh, last time. They hit a lot, I think. And today they hit the Israeli Rosh Pina Airport, southeast of Safed, with a kamikaze drone strike. So they're back. They also said, I saw a speech from one of the resistance leaders in Iraq, and they said our first priority is the liberation of our land from America, and the second priority is uh, assisting the Palestinians uh, in their just struggle. So that's them. Uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon uh, announced, I don't know, five, ten different attacks today. Uh, kamikaze drones in Carantina Heights, Rue uh, Sat Al Alam with rockets, radar site in Shaba Farms, I, Israeli troops in Metola settlement, uh, attacks against the Maale Golan barracks, uh, shelling the settlement of Avdon with Katyushas, targeting the Zaura uh, Israeli base, and a newly established command headquarters with artillery shells. So, quite a day for Hezbollah. Um, Hezbollah also. I forgot I our our intrepid YouTube commenters who never miss a thing uh <laughs> noted that Hezbollah did report foiling several ground incursion attempts by the Golani brigades in recent days. I don't know what they were planning to do. They were not it's it's not that they went big but they did make a series of infiltration attempts, which I suppose they've done numerous times in times of peace and in times of war. Uh, they try to send small groups of troops in, maybe to assassinate somebody or... Plant listening devices. Plant listening devices. I have seen a special about... Uh, we we met, we mentioned in a sit rep many moons ago after a speech by Hassan Nasrallah, the general secretary of Hezbollah, where he was extremely angry about the use of phones and and Amazon rings and these kinds of devices and how how much the Israeli benefit the Israelis benefit from them and there I saw a recent report of along those lines about how how integrated into the Israeli kill chain and assassination network the cell phones of Lebanon Lebanese people are and their devices are very important in that yeah um yeah. i think that's yeah so he's so dangerous <laughs> devices when he's trying to when you, you see nasrallah making speeches and trying to explain operational security to his audience of millions of lebanese people so it was so it was interesting um for someone whose job is basically like to lay out the grand strategy and and priorities to get into the nitty-gritty of like stop turn your phones off for god's sake yeah he said put them in a faraday cage <laughs> yeah anyway um uh got okay gaza okay so gaza is interesting because gaza the you you reported on this at the electronic intifada um live stream today which is 
and I've been talking about, we've been talking about the Battle of Zaytun, and there is some more fighting in Zaytun. There's a, there, Al-Quds reported today that they shelled a gathering of Israeli soldiers on Street 10 south of Zaytun, set up a precise ambush against a convoy of Israeli military vehicles infiltrating southeast of Zaytun, and Khan Yunus too. There's fighting in Khan Yunus, um, targeting military vehicles, soldiers' vehicles, fierce clashes uh, from most of these but um, the, I would say it looks to me like the numbers, the level of uh, attacks is a little bit lower. And that does, I, I think you said something like the Israelis have not, if not withdrawn, reconfigured. Yeah, they is- pulled back from Zaytun. There's no question yeah. about that. And depending on the description of south of Zaytun, you're getting into the the um, highway that the Israelis are trying to make to split the Gaza Strip in half. So I think what you see in the reports today are more standoff fire, like uh, rockets mm-hmm. and mortars against Israeli positions. Um, rather than what we saw for the last two weeks, which was like very fierce fighting uh, in Zaytun, a division level invasion, 10,000 plus uh, invasion of Zaytun. Um, apparently, to it was a, supposed to be a tunnel operation to cut um, a tunnel that goes from the north to the south, but there's no indication that any kind of that work um, took place. Um, so it's difficult. I mean, it's difficult to report day by day on the on the status of the war. Um, yeah, because it looks like always... a failed operation, another failed operation in Zaytun and failed operation in Khan Yunus, too. They had to rotate out their force in Khan Yunus, which they surely didn't plan on when that force went in in December. Um, but they just pulled, they had to rotate uh, the paratroopers brigade out. And the commander of that brigade said uh, that we didn't achieve our goal. Um, our duty to, to dismantle Hamas didn't happen. I mean, the battle in Khan Yunis really came up with nothing for the Israelis propaganda wise. The, the most they were able to accomplish was um, sniping innocent civilians in Nasser Hospital. Um, but they didn't ca- they didn't get any information on captives, which they said, you know, they built this up in Khan Yunus as if this was the center, you know, the centerpiece of the resistance was going to be in Khan Yunus. And they got nothing to show for that battle um, in terms of propaganda. And so that's why you see Netanyahu saying things like, well, if we don't go into Rafa, then, you know, people who say we can who are trying to stop us going into Rafa are trying to have us lose the war. Um, So they really are staking it on, I mean, they're just kicking the can down the road. They can't, five months uh, they've been given, which is considerably longer than I think the Americans had in mind to allow uh, this killing to uh, carry on. I think that the Americans, I think their original thought was that it would wrap up in January sometime. And on, Invasion uh, of Rafa, if if it's to be anything other than military vandalism, is a months long operation, and the the Israelis just aren't ready for that right now. Um, so that there's going to be a delay before that happens. I mean, Biden just said in his State of the Union uh, that they're going to build a. Is this jumping ahead? They're going to no, build go ahead, a pier. They're going to build a pier in Gaza to uh, uh-huh. offload, uh, like to to build like a a temporary military installation, like a floating pier that can offload larger amounts of of aid. Um, but there's still like even even that. What has to go into? I mean, it's hard to even fathom. We've been saying this all along, but I, I don't know. What it's hard to imagine what a, an invasion of Rafa looks like with a with a million and a half people. It's just such a horror show. Yeah, I still think they'll do it, but I don't think it'll make any difference. I mean, it was interesting to see Abu Hamza from Islamic Jihad, the um, Al Quds spokesperson who said we we can go on as long as it takes and that was I, I don't know if i heard exactly that formulation ever um but it was sort of like 
you know, it'll go on as long as it takes. And, and that was when I saw that combined with, combined with the latest breakdown of the ceasefire negotiations, it, it was, it was, I kind of realized that this is really different. This is not going to end the way previous rounds of war between Israel and uh, Gaza have ended. I don't think it's gonna, I don't think the Americans are going to call this one off. And, and somebody said that, I don't know if it was Abu Hamza or somebody else, but somebody said something like, this is going to go on until the Israelis, something happens to the Israelis to make them stop. It was one of these resistance leaders. They said either the, oh yeah, he did mention the Americans. He said either the Americans will um, decide the cost is too high or the entity itself will experience some some loss on the battlefield that they can no longer sustain. So, yeah, I mean, wh why would Biden come out and say that there's going to be a cease when is, he did his ice cream cone ceasefire thing. Like, what? Why would he come out and say a day? There, there, there seems to be a breakdown in understanding of what's happening, for these messages to be coming back that are so positive, and then uh, clearly mm -hmm. uh, there's just just such a disconnect. I, I don't understand what Biden has to gain by continually humiliating himself in front of the Israelis who clearly just don't care about anything that yeah. he's saying they're 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 kind they're coming up with a military operation to float uh, you know like even the the airdrops are significant uh, you, know, you know risk Work. to american yeah. forces but that they don't might shoot it down yeah yeah that that would just be a total for for Amer there's no way that Biden wants this to be the case. There's so it it's just really remarkable how um yeah, they just they don't care. They're they're just starving them and yeah. everybody's just watching it happen. Um China the pretty much short of the uh, the I don't know premier of China Xi Jinping the, the foreign minister Wang Yi he said he called it a, he called the war a disgrace to civilization did you see that no it's, but that's a, i mean it, i, I like can't believe that truer hundreds words of, were never spoken yeah <laughs> it just the absolute depravity of what we're watching mm -hmm. and and just even just the the pretense of an international community or um you know this idea of alliances uh yeah. it just you know i mean in the congressional testimony of the secretary of defense uh, Lloyd Austin the other day, uh, one of the Democratic senators said that they had sent, the U.S. has sent 21,000 yeah, bombs to that. Israel. And the Israeli Air Force claimed the other day that they have dropped 26,000 bombs, yeah. aerial bombs, just from fighter jets alone. Plus, so they, so they, it's, it's just math. You, you could almost do like a, like a grade school math question. If America sent 21,000 bombs and Israel dropped 26,000 bombs, how many bombs did Israel have at the beginning of the war? How many 5, American bombs. bombs did they have before the war started? Yeah. And yeah, they're just uh, humiliating them on, a, on a, it, they're just yeah. tossing this international community into. So Wang, Wang Yi said, it it's a disgrace to civilization. The international community must act urgently and make reaching an immediate ceasefire and cessation of hostilities a top priority. Ensuring humanitarian relief is an urgent moral responsibility. We support Palestine becoming an official member of the United Nations. And the disaster in Gaza once again reminds the world of the fact that it is no longer possible to ignore the Palestinian territories have been occupied for a long time. So I'd say that's one of the best statements China has done so far. One of the strongest uh, it's, I know, I know. It's 153 like, days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, the... Uh, I just had it. I lost it. It was the... The peer thing. I mean, the peer, the temporary peer. I don't know that the Israelis would, will allow that. <laughs> I mean, it's like the Americans don't know about the Israeli naval blockade of Gaza that's been going on for 17 years, where they yeah. shoot any fisherman in a skiff uh, yeah. going out to catch fish. So it, it it opens up just this whole other can of worms that 
yeah. that just it's just very surprising to me that the Americans uh, are just are so impotent in this situation. There's and absolutely to be floating such a such a such a plan. And then what that looks like to Israel, and I, I don't know, I don't know. I mean, the airdrops are the airdrops are 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 criminal. I, that the people believe that this is a solution. They're dropping ready to eat meals, like thirty thousand ready to eat meals with you know like the amount of resources that go into to flying those planes, and then dropping them into the sea so that everyone who whoever runs fastest gets the aid. At, at, this was a functioning society before yeah. under a brutal siege. It was a functioning society that was able to distribute aid to everybody who needed it. People didn't sleep on the streets despite, uh, you know, the brutal siege and poverty that it created. Um, even they still had agriculture, see- they had agriculture, they had, they were exporting, uh, crops for for foreign exchange they were they had fish they had fishing boats they had a food a sovereign food supply yeah and it's just been dismantled and the aid distribution system already exists and then we they've turned that aid distribution system into dropping these massive parachutes into the lake and into the sea and then people are going to sleep under those parachutes as tents that they're not letting in. The whole thing is just uh, uh, vile, vile beyond words. How could oh. there not be a phone call behind the scenes to the American administration that's floating this entire war um, that, that they're, they have absolutely no power to make that, to make that call. Uh, and even just to enforce a temporary ceasefire and, and they're not get yeah. your people back. There's a, a batch of people that can be released immediately, basically without negotiations. Uh, and, and Israel's not even releasing them. Abu Beda said the other day that they believe that Israel's killed 70 of the captives. And he also said, and that, that, this is a point I, I that occurred to me today, which is that um, Abu Obeda said 70 of the captives have been killed by the Israelis, but he also said this incredible thing where he said the price will be the same, whether there's five or 50, we are going to get all our prisoners out for all of yours, who are, however many are alive at the end, which yeah. is an amazing thing. And the other thing that occurred to me today after thinking about that was we've seen a lot of things from the Palestinian resistance in the past five months. We've seen you know, all the things you've been reporting on in the videos, the the Yassin 105 rocket, the tandem rockets, the f- shape charges, the ambushes, the destruction of buildings with um, Israeli soldiers inside, all of these things we've seen. We have not seen them taking additional Israeli military prisoners because they don't need them. But should the Israelis kill a bunch more of their prisoners, should the Palestinians decide they need more prisoners, they can take more prisoners. We have seen that they can, and they can take them out of their tanks, and they can take them out of their vehicles, and they can take them into the tunnels. And I I just think that it's like Israel has forgotten that That there's attack tunnels under the border all, all along the border. And that that these soldiers that they've sent in, in addition to being killed, can also be captured. And, you know. Well, that's why they don't get out of their armored vehicles, right? We talked about that early in the war. There's no way you can, uh, you know, quote unquote, win the war without getting out of your vehicles. So we were for for weeks, we were charting that. Have they gotten out of their vehicles? Have they gotten out of their vehicles? And they just never, they just never did. Um, So... You were saying they need to break. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say was uh, the commander of uh, Ansar Allah, um, Sayyid Abdul Malik Houthi, also did a speech today. And lots of stuff, as usual, from him, a lot of important messages. But one of the one of the ones that raised my eyebrows was that he said um, 282,000 men have been trained. See, that was the thing. He said so far with that number that you quoted a couple of weeks ago or however many days. I don't know. 
Mm -hmm. I don't understand time anymore, but Mm -hmm. yeah. So they're training more. Uh, He also said, I believe that was, he also said that they've fired 400 drones, almost 400 drones in this, um, in this battle. Yeah. Okay. So I just wanted to, I just, the, I just, the last thing I kind of wanted to talk about, because when when the when we know for sure that the Zaytun battle is over, we will um, we'll go through the numbers and we'll look at the losses that the Israelis have experienced in Zaytun and and try to get try to give you guys a picture of what happened in this battle because I think I think history will show that this was an important battle, um, but until then the other thing i wanted to talk about today was this like hamas um gave this kind of explanation or like a like an outline of what their they what their offer was they kind of they kind of said i I don't know if i would put like the words like uh, this is our final offer but it's it's something along those lines like they they've said things like the negotiations have have stalled they said, you know, the, the Israelis are not interested in a deal. They want a reprieve. They want a pause, and then they want to continue their aggression. And we, we, uh, one of our red lines in this negotiation is that we want the ceasefire to be an actual ceasefire. Um, so he, so there's a there's a statement from Hamas which says that they they kind of made a list of the final offer like and in negotiation theory you you make an offer and then like this which is like this is the this is what we can do this is the best we can do for you and if you don't accept this then we're going to have to go back to war for as long as it takes and that's where we seem to be uh now but again you know just the things that they uh, they put in their final offer which we've covered almost ad nauseum here is like people get to return to their homes. People are no longer starved, being deliberately starved through a campaign of starvation. People get to rebuild their homes that Israel destroyed. And uh, Israel stops bombing and killing people every day. This, this, delusional wildly optimistic um yeah i mean it's not really totally close. clear where it's breaking down uh I, I, is it over the number of people that israel like is israel really negotiating to leave their people in tunnels for m- many more months over the difference between a couple of hundred prisoners in a population where you've arrested like uh, six or seven thousand people just since the battle started in in october my it, sense it, is uh, not that my sense is the the negotiations are breaking down over israel saying we want all our prisoners back and then we'll once we get them all back we're going to resume our our bombing and hamas is saying we want we want a deal that's structured in a way that you don't get your prisoners back until we really know that you're not going to, until we get all our people back and we know that you're not going to just start bombing us again. But they have been flexible on this idea of a pause. And that was something that previously they weren't. And they've, they've said that they're, they're willing to do this first stage, um, which they previously said they weren't going to do. Um, that just makes it really difficult to understand why. Uh, but I, I also think that Israel's uh, added the starvation element in a way that since that, since that, since then. So, and I, th- I think Israel must have, they must, the Israelis must have got the idea that, hey, this is, this could work for us. This starvation could get us what um, bombing and. Yeah. And that's what the Hamas here. just keeps saying. You don't get to you don't get concessions that you didn't win on the battlefield yeah. um, by by starving civilians. Yeah. So. So we're so it's stuck. 
and that means the war goes on and that means the war goes on until the israelis really feel like it can and i i don't think I can see a future in which the Israelis have to stop. I don't think that's unfeasible. I think even with America sending everything that they can send, it's possible for Israel to run out of resources. There's resources yeah. are not just. Bombs. I think we're watching that right now. They're not able to go into Rafa right now, mm -hmm. um, which is just creating this, uh, this is horrible interim a period i don't know if people saw but the israelis dropped leaflets from the sky uh wishing people a happy, happy ramadan, ramadan and saying don't forget to share with the needy it just like just really we just keep saying it but just so deranged so comprehensively deranged it's just unbelievable i mean the the we're 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 in territory that nobody's ever seen before, you know, like the world, the UN special rapporteur on food, who whose job it is to to watch famines around the world, uh, said it has never happened this fast before. They've never seen it like a famine just imposed like this, and and all of these countries pretending like they're uh, like they're helpless, like Israel, like Israel all of a sudden is this sovereign state after yeah. being the 51st state for the, uh, for the last. Oh no, yeah. And we just have to send them infinite resources. We have to send them to them no matter what. Yeah. And without yeah. those resources, the war would stop almost immediately because Israel can't go into those, um, you know, like they still have to be ready to fight a war in Lebanon. They, they can't, I mean, Lebanon, Hezbollah has the ability to collapse their state. They can't just take that for granted uh, on the northern border. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's. Yeah, I mean, at first I thought the starvation might work for them, but now I don't think it will. Uh, I just think they're just going to starve people while they, the war continues as it as it's been as it's been continuing yeah i mean it's the starvation is just opens just such a like a devastating element to this all because um because there really is a limit the really this can't it can't just go like this um uh, indefinitely it just can't go weeks and weeks i mean the the thing that we've been the thing that we've been wrong about in this is, is this ceasefire is the ability of these ceasefire um talks it, it 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 keeps appearing that the americans believe that they have a deal which is just humiliating them and and it's been happening now for uh for weeks and weeks that very high level delegations cia chief um you know biden directly intervening um uh, you know kamala harris saying there needs to be a ceasefire the other day. Um, just really staking positions that um that, that just should just blow off. They just blow them off. And meanwhile, in Israel, there's you know, there's massive divisions within Israel that it's not clear that yeah. Israel can just carry this out domestically indefinitely. They want to expand the draft, right? To new categories of religious people. There were protests against uh that expansion of conscription because the future of their state can't operate especially if they lose that european um you know the the liberal party I mean, yeah right wing the, liberals, the, but the beach yeah party they lose population. That, that demographic and they end up um yeah with just a, a an ethno-religious state that doesn't a significant portion of the um, population doesn't fight so yeah they have to broaden conscription um, they passed a bill to deepen the training to extend the training period um, for yeah, soldiers to be more that prepared just, that just makes it more unappealing for people because that's not why people join the army or go to israel they don't do that to train and drill and fight i mean what are they going to teach them are they going to teach them to get out of their tanks? Are they going to teach them to stay away from windows? 
Oh, these I mean, are that all would things... be the first thing that I would. This is not training, right? This is just like decisions that you make to be, you know, to do things that could lead to casualties. Or are not. they not watching the videos? I don't like, think do... Israeli society is watching the videos. <laughs> the society is definitely not. But so presumably some intelligence units are, but maybe they. I don't know. I, I can only I can only assume that their racial ideology and their racialized contempt for Palestinians is so deep that even the intelligence people that are charged that are tasked with reviewing these things don't have are so full of disdain for Arabs that they yeah maybe it doesn't even matter if all you're doing is destroying everything right like there's not there's nothing like a battle plan uh happening at this point they're just well, destroying some, that was something they, there was some kind of battle plan that was foiled in Zaytun it was very clear that they had some kind of yeah they once, went in for the tunnels yeah and these tunnel operations, just judging from their field reports, we would see the field reports having more and more tunnel yeah. uh, operations. Video. There shouldn't yeah. be less tunnel operations. So, um, yeah, it doesn't appear that they're willing to um, carry on that fight. And and as I said on the show today, the, the Israelis just bragged about closing up that one tunnel that they found in the north that was uh, an mm -hmm. attack tunnel in the north that was in the buffer zone where there's no built up area around it so that the soldiers could operate freely. It's very close to the border um, so they but can like, bring explosives in a lot easier. The type of video we're seeing is still this. After five months, it's still just Israeli soldiers shooting nothing. Yeah, just while hiding behind berms. Look at them. Hiding just... behind berms and shooting into nothing, just dumping ammunition into nothing. Yeah. What is what is this? What are we watching? Like what and look how many there are, right? It's not just a couple of them. This is the entire chain of command that's doing this. Yeah. Uh and and these are the kinds of configurations and positions that are sh being shelled and mortared from a distance by resistance groups. So this is also not smart. I mean, maybe a good photo op, but that we've seen uh, groupings like this getting hit. Oh, yeah. And that's the thing about those videos is that it gives the sense that the Israelis are able to just do anything that they want, which is part of the propaganda benefit to them. It makes it look like they have such total control um, that they're able to spend their time, you know, putting underwear on on tanks or stealing kids mm. toys or whatnot. Um, but but you can clearly see from the field reports, from the casualty reports, even that they admit to um that they're they're getting hit constantly it's not what's happening um they're not just wandering the streets um of these cities that they've cleared the only place they're outside of their tanks is on, is behind those massive berms um mm -hmm. that their bulldozers have spent 5 months um creating for them so there's no indication that uh yeah that there's you know the videos make it seem those videos amongst other things that they do uh, make it seem like the Israelis have full control, but that's just not, uh, you know, we know that that's just not the case. And the, the Battle of Zaytun showed that. And and there was just so many clues in the Battle of Zaytun about what it would look like if the Israelis planned to occupy long term and drag this war out yeah. for multiple years. Yeah. The resistance will be more capable of meeting right. the attack than they were the first time around. Yeah. Um, which the Israelis have already invaded Zaytun. They already fought a battle of Zaytun. Yeah. And then they have to come back again and still have nothing to show for it, except the, the horror when they pulled out is when we found the, you know, the 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 Bulldozer prisoners that were run over by That's armored right. vehicles uh, and the massacred civilians. This This is what we're seeing when they pull out. They're burning the place as they leave um in failure yeah so uh, you know i don't know i don't know how to i don't know what we're looking for in the coming like between in the next sit rep or in the coming weeks but i i'll tell you what i'm not looking for i'm not looking for the u.s to call this off i i mean i think i think if that was going to happen it would have happened by now so 
I think this is, yeah, like I said, in negotiation theory, there's this thing called the best alternative to a negotiated agreement or the BATNA, you know? So you've got to prepare your your alternative and the alternative is just the, the war continues, the attrition continues and, you know, the horror continues. And... Yeah, I mean, I, I think they're, they'll be defeated in Rafa. I, I I don't yeah, see exactly. how you can militarily accomplish. Why and would it carnage. be any different? Why would it be any different than it would be worse? That, yeah, exactly. It would be worse. It would be worse because you've telegraphed this battle now for months. Mm -hmm. um, your forces have already shown what they can do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the battle in Khan Yunus, they're able to move between Khan Yunus and Rafa, the fighters. Um, yeah. And, and it, yeah, there's. There's no outcome where this benefits uh, Israel to drag this on. And the longer they do this without, you know, with the just completely devaluing their own people. Um, yeah. And, and the other thing is like their, their better troops are the ones they've used up. And so in a, in a sit after five months, a conscript army that's taken unknown numbers of casualties thousands i think is and and between but disabled you know you've seen the videos and photos of the many really horrific uh, injuries that israelis have you know permanent disability that they have and what they have what what they're going to be sending into rafa is also not going to be their best troops uh it's going to be reconstituted units you know people that they've put back to you know units that they put back together after withdrawing yeah they just have the like an unbelievable ability to create like mechanized uh you know targets destruction yeah just mm. like systematic destruction that they don't have to they don't have to be good soldiers to to carry out yeah. a genocide yeah yeah I there's guess. nobody when this war is over there in in five years from now there's not going to be anyone that writes about how Israel won this war. It'll be the same way that people talk about Iraq. There, there's just no, the lies that have gotten us through this period aren't going to hold up to any mm -hmm. kind of historical scrutiny. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's all I got. That's the situation report for, that's, for today. That's the situation report for day 153. Um, like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. See ya.